Hello, filmmakers and film enthusiasts. My name is Ron Tomano, city producer of the Albuquerque 48 Hour Film Project, and we welcome you to our new show, 48 Stories. On our television podcast show, we'll be sharing stories from participants of the 48 Hour Film Project, along with people who have been making a difference in our filmmaking community. Today, we'll hear from our second place winners, Sibia Tone, and watch their film, L42. But first, Team 505 and a Half and their film, The Fall of the Lich King. Uh, you are Darren Poe, sports reporter of the century. You are going to kill this. Yeah. Hey, Jack. Good, good. And you? How's your wife? Right. Look, I can explain. Where the wait? No, no, that cannot be him. He looks like the innards of a pot belly pig. That is the Dread Lich King, Darpomio. <laughs> Scourge of nations, sinker of cities, warlock of the reeking horde. In this dimension, he's a null field in loafers. Look, we kill him, and the Lich King dies too. In all dimensions. As the great prophecy foretold, uh-huh. And uh, thanks to someone, we're kind of out of other options. It is not my fault that armor makes noise. And I almost won that duel. I am not gonna fight that wuspus. What have you got? Come on, let's get started. Jack. You're the only one who knows what I'm dealing with, man. We cast this spell to call upon you, Death, to bring our perpetrator to his final breath. Bury him deep beneath this ground, as our vengeance is... Ah, bugger, this is not working. There's something missing here. We need something from this universe to calibrate the spell. Something that's close to his heart. Something that moves him deeply, that he cares about. Find it. What if, 
Look, what if this version of him is not actually so bad? Oh, come on. What if we're killing an innocent man? Well, listen, Jack. You can choose to believe your star anchor who has helped, who has helped. Your star ranker who has held the network together for 12 years! Or, Jack, you can listen to the lies that whore has been spouting. Okay? Never mind. Let's end this waste of wetware. Heed our call, O oh sovereign death. Rob this villain of his breath. Spirits of balance, come to me. Very deep, our enemy. <laughs> I know, I know what you mean, man. Listen, Jack, I really appreciate that you brought this to me first. I always, I, I always tell people I only work for the best. We're good, right? At least he's true to character, he himself. How did this work, anyway? I have no idea. But that's prophecies for you. I wonder if he has any more gold medallions. I'd like to say, well died. <laughs> now what do we do? I could murder a cup of tea. So I'm here with uh, Team 505 and a Half, and they produced a dark comedy film called Fall of the Lich King. And team members, I am with... Monique Andalaria. Jonathan Nagel. Awesome. So tell me about the writing process. Uh, when you picked out that genre, were you excited that you got dark comedy? Were you hoping for something different? So, yeah, I think that we're really excited that we got dark comedy. We also got buddy film. And so there was an aspect of like, well, how can we incorporate maybe some of both of those? But the, uh, the writing team, which was uh, Sparrow, Betsy, me, and then the rest of the team sort of came in. It was a, it, I took um, a lot of things that I did last year and sort of like improved upon that. But we had sort of like a, um, a conversation as we were driving from uh, the kickoff event to where we were writing. And it was just like really specifying like, you know, like what is it that we want to um, express in the film and well, we sort of had a lot of those like ideas sort of um, I would say like streamlined by the time we landed at the um, spot where we were gonna write. That's amazing and then your film was beautifully shot by the way I love the cinematography to it so who is responsible for that? So that was uh, Daniel Zollinger um, he's responsible for it and he did an amazing job um, super pro and I'm Shout out to Daniel. He's really, really great. Yeah. <laughs> so um, let's talk about uh, the shooting uh, process. So you only had one location, which is smart because, you know, when you're doing a film in 48 hours, having multiple locations can really uh, put a wrench in the whole production. Tell me how you obtained that location and what made it the perfect location for your film? How did it make it the perfect yeah, location? Yeah, so I started the location process um, almost two months previously. 
So I was I was uh, working with Gus, who I worked with on last year's 48, and then um, my friend Michael introduced me to Alex, um, who is a professional in the industries and locations, and we just started talking about like what my needs were and what I'm trying to do, and I said basically that I was like I don't <laughs> I don't want to do multiple locations, and I really just want something that's going to be like able to house like you know at least like 15 to like maybe 25 people to shoot with. Gus had a relationship with this homeowner. And it was the Airbnb owner, and they said we have this other home in like you know the uh, Huni Highland area in Albuquerque. Do you guys want to go take a look at it? And it had it was bare bones, like um, they're looking to flip it and as an investment property. And so we walked in, and I was like immediately was like this is the this is killer because I mean it had all the like the colors, the wallpaper. The only thing we need to do is just like really is design out sort of like the the the, the small details of the characters. And that was really it. So it had the bones and it had the character already. Um, and then I'd also like to even shout out to, it's not really a location, but um, Ron and Sue Ramirez, who I met at a car club um, maybe three weeks previous to the shoot. And I was like, hey, I'm looking to maybe have a car in this as well. And so we actually, you know, the car in it is staged. It's a prop car. They have like 30 some cars and they were like absolutely happy to be with part of the, the crew. Yeah, so I was, that car was sick. I was wondering how you obtained that. That's really cool. Uh, talk so the costumes in that uh, in your film were just were unbelievable. You had one costumes and makeup, as a matter of fact, for the film for this year. Uh, tell me about uh, that whole entire process, and you know who was kind of the creative mind behind that. Yeah, I wish that she was here. Uh, that, <laughs> and, uh, maybe she is going to come. I don't know. But uh, Angelique uh, Paul. She's a professional costumer in the industry, and I asked her. She worked with us last year as well. And so I'd like to also kind of give a shout out to her, um, Noni, who is her assistant, and also uh, Paula Rogers. So we're really fortunate with Paula. Paula owns an entire costume house. And then the process for it was really just, you know, as you're writing it, um, Sparrow and Betsy and I were just coming up with like the ideas, and it was, Sparrow's background is a lot in like uh, live action role playing and also um, a lot of like we kind of wanted to imbue a lot of like archetypes in this. So we made that really clear up front with Angelique. Like these are sort of like the big touchstone like archetype characters that we want. I mean, it was a group effort, though, because we're not able to really meet up before to try things on. So really, like he sent me a photo of what he was looking for as far as my character was concerned. And it was one of those where I raided my entire closet of like, OK, I have this, this, this. Here's some furs. Here's these things. And basically, Angelique is saying, OK, thank you. We're going to incorporate this, 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 that and the other. And then I got this thing to put the like final touch on it, you know. So it really is like a moment where all of us come together and it's like, OK, we're really going to make this work. And it's going to get true to us. And when you first read your character and your script, what, would, what came to mind? How were you able to channel? the character and then who did you play again in the film so in the film I played the warrior and for me so I'm an army brat and I really do enjoy martial arts and there is something about having a sense of honor when you're fighting like you don't want to fight somebody who's weaker than you you don't want to fight somebody who you think isn't a, a good challenge or you're not going to be able to get that recognition and that that good like yes i did it you know kind of thing so whenever you're seeing you know the guy that we've been chasing around all of these different dimensions and he's like this you know little wuss puss in a pink shirt and you're like me i'm gonna fight that i mean at least when i got my ass kicked you know it, i he was like something now he's this no you know so then that's when it turns into this spell work instead of me trying to fight him at all because i'm like i'm not gonna waste these i got guns why no <laughs> you know so um we did find moments of realizing that even though my character was a little bit more in the future um there was still this na naivety of like oh here's this like gold medallion thing that i'm finding like this has to be important to him in some way like this is great but really it's a condom wrapper with a condom that i pulled out you know and here i am like going to kiss it and it's like you just know that she doesn't know that that's what it is she sees gold and gold is like the key you know <laughs> and one final note any uh, advice you'd give to anybody who would be participating in the 48 for the first time or to any veteran have fun Seriously, I think that's what it boils down to because like at the end of the day, there's going to be stressors no matter how you look at it and every year it's always different, you know, so it's one of those things like have fun, enjoy the people that are around you, enjoy the moment. If you get it in, hell yeah. If you don't, 
you know what? There's always next year, and it was a great challenge. So there's there's no one who loses in this. Yeah, I'd also just add to that. It's just the whole collaborative aspect of it. It's just find people you want to work with, that you have fun with, and um, it's like it's gonna it's gonna be stressful. I think even if you did it by yourself, it's gonna be stressful. <laughs> so I'd say just assume that that's gonna happen, and then from there, it's uh, have fun, collaborate, and enjoy the process a lot. Because then you'll have a film. That's the, at the end of the day, you'll have a film done. And now the film L42 by Sepia Tone. Are you seeing this? Yeah. This is what we were expecting. You were expecting this? Are these people... dead? Why did you send me here? Look in the shed on your left. It's not here. Move on. Leave them alone. Why? Why am I here? Look in the shed with the porch. There's nothing here. Move on. Wait. What are you waiting for? There's something missing here. That's what you're looking for. Get her out! She's scared. Doesn't matter. Grab her. No! Don't take it off! L42! L42, you listen to me! Do not take your... Hi there. What's your name? Are you alright? I like your earring. Is it yours? Mm -hmm. Does it belong to your mother? Is she here? Yes. Is she dead? No. When, when they eat the fruit, they sleep in the day. What fruit? Where did this come from? This will now to us. Where did all the bodies go? They only sleep during the day.
Are you all conscious? The fruit will help. I'm Larry Kim. I'm an accountant. I'm Debbie Poe. I'm a sports reporter. I'm Brandon Silva. You have to remind yourself out loud or else you will forget. The fruit will help. Don't listen to them. They've forgotten. It's the fruit. It takes control. Do you remember your name? Uh, of course. L42? But what's your name? L42. The fruit helped her. She is better now. No more problems. The fruit helped. Do you remember? Please, please remember. I'm here with Sepiatone, and they uh, made the wonderful film L42, and members of Sepiatone. Andrew Crawford. And I'm Chloe Crawford. Awesome. And so let's talk about the actual concept of the film. What genre did you pull? <laughs> well, that's a funny story. We pulled martial arts and uh, fish out of water. And it's kind of a funny story because we had... Uh, contacted a couple of the actors we worked with before and they're a part of a stunt team <laughs> and so they were like hey our stunt team might be interested and so do you want to talk to them so we talked to them and they're like yeah we're on board and stuff like that and when we pulled martial arts and fish out of water they were super excited to do a martial arts action film and it was rough because we were like i don't think that's the direction we're going I think we're doing fish out of water. And uh, there's a little conflict uh, right off the bat. So, yeah, I mean, with that conflict in mind, that writing process must have been really difficult with the ideas of, you know, some people maybe wanting to do martial arts while others wanting to do fish out of water. How were you able to finally come to a one cohesive idea? Oh, gosh. Well, we, you know, right after we, we went to our house and started writing, and, and Everett's not here. He's actually our team lead. Uh, and I think when we drew it, he was excited because I think he was like, let's do a martial arts movie. And w we were like, I, y you know, the, the, there's not enough time in seven minutes to really develop characters that you care about. You know, and if you don't care about the characters, you don't care about the fighting. And so we, we really wanted to tell an emotional story that was interesting and relevant and stuff like that. So we chose to go fish out of water and so you know we we had to convince Everett at first and then Everett started writing with us and started throwing out ideas and about three in the morning we thought we had the worst script ever <laughs> and uh, <laughs> we all went to bed for a couple hours and uh, woke up the next morning thinking we're gonna have to rewrite everything because our script sucks but uh, we we read it and we're like oh this is actually okay. Let's let's do it. And so we had we had actors scheduled to be there at, at noon, and uh, we filmed till about ten o'clock that night, and then started editing. Wow! So you started at noon. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Do you think that was a little late to start for you, or do you think that was the perfect time with your schedule? It, well, it worked out okay. Um, I I wish I did have a little more time to edit. Yeah. So I think I would have. You know, this was our first 48, so I, I think I think I would have uh, um, probably scheduled actors to come in the morning. <laughs> but we did want to do. Uh, we kind of knew in our mind that we wanted night. Yeah, we had to and that night and so we, night. you know, unless we film the first night, we got to go into the next night. So 
I, I mean, I don't know if we could have done it different. So I wanted to ask you too, um, your casting, your actress, a- Emily, who won best actress for the 48 hour film project, which is awesome. Congratulations on that. Um, how were you able to get her into character as a director? Because that's one of your jobs is to, you know, have the actors, you know, simulate in their mind that they're this character in this fictional world. How are you able to communicate what you wanted for Emily in your movie? Oh, gosh, well, I mean, the first, first of all, cast Emily. She's amazing. amazing. She's amazing to work with. She's an amazing actress. Everyone um, on our team was amazing. Like, everyone's amazing that we had. Everyone was fun to work with. Yeah. They're all amazing. They helped out in any way they could. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but Emily's amazing. <laughs> yeah, and the the Rising Rising Star Stunt Team? Yeah, Rising Star Stunt Rising Star team. Stunt Team. Work with Rising yeah. Star Stunt Team. <laughs> They're amazing. Gary Choi, awesome leader. Uh, every person there was helpful, um, fun to be around. It was like like we had a we had a blast uh, filming this. Um, Emily, all you got to do is kind of explain to her what the character is thinking, and and she goes there. She goes there with her her whole being. It's it's pretty amazing to watch. And uh, at some point, we need to do a bloopers reel because. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you heard it in that last scene, like bugs were everywhere. You heard the crickets, like, chirp, chirp, chirp. you know, it's like. Those, those were crickets those actually. Were real, from, yeah. Oh, I thought those that were, sound no, those were live. <laughs> those were live where we were at. And uh, there were bugs everywhere. And we we probably have like six or seven takes where, where she's like focused in character and then a bug just lands on her and <laughs> boom, it's gone. And so I don't know, at some point we got to put together a blooper reel because it, it, it was pretty, it was pretty funny, funny seeing how she goes from like this character to another. <laughs> so how was the, um, so this, so you said you wish you had a little bit more time for editing. Yeah. What did you come across in the editing stage uh, that made you say that you wish you had a little bit more time? Uh, well, we did. We actually re-edited the movie. Um, oh wow! Uh, uh, in in the next couple of weeks afterwards. Okay. So um, the the two things we really well, three things we really did. Uh, there was one shot where we um, in the first shed she looks in, where it's just messy in there. We it really doesn't fit the story. Uh, so my wife and production designer um, <laughs> reset the um, the shed, made it look like it belonged in the story, and uh, we reshot a shot, re-edited that in. We redid the color because I didn't have time to color correct yeah. the first thing, and then the 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 visor, the HUD uh, effects where she's seeing the person talking to her, mm-hmm. completely redid that because that was not did not have time to do a decent job on that. So any wor- last words you would like to give to any new 48 er who may want to join? Have fun yeah. and bring food That's that, right. that helped. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we, we had my parents bring food and, and, uh, <laughs> you know, when, when, when actors are, you know, cause, cause filmmaking is hurry up and wait. And so if they have a, a comfortable room to wait in and food to eat, it goes a lot smoother and yeah. makes it a lot funner process. Mm-hmm.